Good evening. Uh, welcome. Uh, special uh, services this weekend, uh, as we do in the church, uh, in the Lutheran Church in particular, each year the last Sunday in October uh, is designated to remember the Lutheran Reformation. Um, which Martin Luther uh, unofficially began on October 31st, uh, 1517. Uh, so we will be uh, discussing and kind of focusing on that a little bit um, this evening. Uh, we do have the celebration of Holy Communion uh, this evening. It is Divine Service 3, um, continue, uh, continuing with um, all of the uh, alterations and uh, precautions that, uh, that we are taking for Holy Communion. Uh, everything you need for the service, the hymns and the order of service printed out for you uh, in the bulletin. Uh, before we begin with our first hymn, the church is one foundation. We attend to the ringing of the bells.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you forgive me until O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I will speak of your testimonies before kings, O Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Come, O children, listen to me. The Lord redeems the life of his servants. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I will speak of your testimonies before kings, O Lord. Glory be to God on high. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and gracious Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep us steadfast in your grace and truth. Protect and deliver us in times of temptation. Defend us against all enemies, and grant to your church your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, 
who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The first reading for the Festival of the Reformation is written in the Revelation to St. John, the 14th chapter. Then I saw another angel flying directly overhead with an eternal gospel to proclaim to those who dwell on earth, to every nation and tribe and language and people. And he said with a loud voice, fear God and give him glory because the hour of his judgment has come, and worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea and springs of water. This is the word of the Lord. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Walk about Zion, go about her, number her towers. Tell the next generation that this is God, our God forever and ever. The epistle reading, the letter of St. Paul to the Romans, the third chapter. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be stopped and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For by works of the law, no human being will be justified in his sight, since through the law comes knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law, although the law and the prophets bear witness to it. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation by his blood to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness because in his divine forbearance he had passed over former sins. It was to show his righteousness at the present time so that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of our boasting? It is excluded. By what kind of law? By a law of works? No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that one is justified by faith apart from the works of the law. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the eighth chapter. So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are offspring of Abraham, and have never been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you say you will become free? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever. The son remains forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. This is the gospel of the Lord. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, 
who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the name of Jesus, amen. Jesus said, if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples. You will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And as you notice, Jesus' opponents immediately begin arguing with him. This, uh, this reading from John chapter 8 is actually a shorter, um, it's just a, a brief snippet of a much larger conversation uh, between Jesus and his opponents. Uh, ultimately, uh, there are large numbers of people who do not want to hear what Jesus has to say. Uh, and so they accuse him of all sorts of things. They accuse him of blasphemy. They accuse him of, uh, of speaking lies. They accuse him of making things up. 
But Jesus reminds them, he confirms to them, that the word he speaks to them is the truth. And the reason that they, his opponents, do not listen to him is because they are liars and would rather believe lies than the word of God. Notice what they say here when Jesus talks about the truth setting them free. They respond to him, we are offspring of Abraham and have never been enslaved to anyone. Really? How many of you, uh, thinking back to the Old Testament, how many of you can remember at least one instance, a pretty major one, when the Israelites were slaves? Anybody? Yeah, it's basically the whole point of the book of Exodus. The Israelites are slaves in Egypt, and they are for hundreds of years. And so God, in his mercy, sends Moses to say to Pharaoh, let my people go. The deliverance that God provides for his people is great. It is, uh, in the Old Testament, one of the greatest examples of, uh, and demonstrations of God's, God's love and mercy for his people. He sets them free from slavery and leads them through the wilderness into their own land. There are other instances, other uh, tribes and other nations that oppress and enslave the Israelites the Philistines for a time, among others, the Assyrians, the Babylonians. That's another uh, important one to remember from Old Testament history, the Babylonian captivity. What do they mean? We've never been slaves of anyone. In fact, if you ask them, if you remember, it wasn't all that long ago that uh, uh, we talked about how they thought of the Roman Empire as, uh, as enslaving them or oppressing them. When Jesus is speaking, this isn't even the point. He's not even talking about physical slavery or any kind of earthly oppression. He's talking about sin. Everyone who sins is a slave to sin, and that's all of us. And it is that slavery to sin, to death, to the devil, to hell, that is the slavery from which we need to be set free. And thanks be to God, that is the gospel. That is the good news. That is the very thing that Jesus has come into the world to accomplish. By his suffering and death and resurrection to set us free, to forgive our sins, to redeem us, to deliver us, to claim us as his own people and lead us into everlasting life in his kingdom with him. Still, so many refuse to believe. They claim to be offspring of Abraham. A little bit later in this chapter, Jesus will come right out and tell them that they are children of the devil because they believe lies and they proclaim lies rather than hearing and embracing the truth of God's word. It once again takes us back to Genesis, back to the beginning when the devil first comes to tempt Adam and Eve. What's the question the devil asks? Did God really say? Right, Eve, in particular, it's the, the temptation of Eve. Eve has the command of God. You shall not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But the devil comes questioning, did God really say? Are we really sure that's what God said? 
And it gets Eve to question, gets Eve to doubt. And then finally, the devil, the liar, the father of lies, as Jesus calls him, substitutes his own word for the word of God. God says, if you eat of the tree of the fruit, you will die. Nah, never happen. Go right ahead and eat. You'll be fine. And Eve falls into sin. And the thing is, Eve, the the first sin is not really Eve taking the bite of the fruit. That's what we usually think of. But before she even takes a bite of the fruit, that real first sin is that Eve believes the word of the devil rather than the word of God. And that's the reason why she eats of the fruit. She has forgotten or ignored or rejected the word of God, the, the truth... And instead, put in its place a lie, the lies of the devil, that said, no, you won't die. In fact, your life will be better. You'll be smarter. You'll be prettier. You'll be happier. Just eat the fruit. At its heart, every temptation that is faced by the Christian church in all times and places. Every temptation that is faced by Christian people comes down to this. God has spoken. God has revealed to us his truth in his word. What God speaks to us is true. It's an accurate description of who he is and who we are and what he expects of us and so on. The temptation of the devil is always a lie, but it's always a direct challenge. It's the opposite. Whatever God says, the the lies of the devil is the opposite, right? Don't believe what God says. Don't believe the word of God. Instead, substitute something else, anything else. The, the, The other thing doesn't really matter. But substitute something else. Substitute some other word, some other belief some other philosophy, some other law, some other feeling, some other desire, some other anything, wherever it comes from. And we have to choose. God is holding up his truth. The devil wants to substitute that word of God with a lie. And we see it happen again and again And again, in the Holy Scriptures, Old Testament and New Testament, when the people sin against God, this is what happens. They set aside the word of God, they set aside the truth of God, and they believe some lie that the devil is telling them, or that the nations around them are telling them, or something in their own uh, heart, something in their own thoughts and feelings and desires that causes them to set aside the word of God and substitute something else. When you read John chapter 8, this is specifically what the Pharisees have done. It's the reason why why Jesus is always opposed to them and, and why they're so angry with him that he constantly points it out. The Pharisees, they should have been following the law of God. They should have been studying the word of God and living by it. But what they really did was they ended up substituting their own word, their own law, for what God had said. They set aside the word of God and they put in place something else, something different. It's what the Reformation is about, ultimately. Luther, studying the word of God and recognizing all the ways in which the medieval church was lying to him. And how the church of the 15th and 16th centuries leading up to that had again substituted the word of God for for something else, some man-made rule, some man-made system that was completely contrary to the word of God. And Luther said, of all the things he wrote and all the things he said, basically summed up as, we need to go back to what God says. We need to go back to the word of God. We need to go back to the truth. 
and not believe what, whatever the substitute is. So where are we today? Is it any different? I don't think so. We have the word of God. The truth of God remains true today as it was then, as it will be forever. And the temptation of the devil is still there. And the pressure from the world around us, the pressure from others to change what the church believes and teaches because the world has a different word, a substitute word. And again, our own thoughts and feelings and desires getting in the way, wanting to substitute our own beliefs, our own opinions for the word of God. And so Jesus speaks to all of us. He speaks to his people of all times and places. If you abide in my word, you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. If you abide in the word of God, that's where the truth is. That's what the truth is. It's what it means to be a disciple of Jesus, a student. To hear and learn and study that word and live by it. And the truth will set you free. The temptation of the devil, the fall into sin, brought death. It brought corruption, it brought pain, it brought suffering, it brought hatred and greed. And a world filled with lies. But the truth of Jesus sets us free. It is forgiveness. It is eternal life. It is salvation from all the lies of the devil and all the lies of the world. In that sense, it is a warning to us as well not to substitute the lies of the world for the word of God. You know, I used to tell people, I still do, but um, I'm always always telling people, don't believe everything you read on the internet. Don't believe everything you see on the news. I'm I'm tempted, I I probably, we're not quite there yet, but I'm kind of tempted to change that statement and say, don't believe anything you read on the internet. Don't believe anything you see on the news. Everyone is lying to you. That's the way it feels some days. You might immediately turn around and ask me, well, how can we trust you? It's a fair question. It's a fair question. Uh, And the answer is, And the thing that you need to remember as a church, as a Christian congregation, that the word of God must predominate. That when you you listen to a sermon, it is not the pastor's opinions. It is not my personal ideas or thoughts or beliefs about anything. It is the word of God or it doesn't matter. Thus says the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. We read directly from the Holy Scriptures, and the sermon is to be a a faithful and true exposition of the Holy Scriptures to the people. And you can hold me to that. You should hold me to that. Because you don't need to hear what I think or what I believe, or what my personal opinions are as a human being. You need to hear the word of God. Because that's the truth. That's the truth that reminds you who you are as God's creatures, created in his image. It's a truth that reminds you who you are as fallen, as sinful, in need of repentance, in need of forgiveness, in need of salvation. And that word of God is the truth of Christ, our Savior, 
who gave his life for you, who was raised to life again for you, that your sins might be forgiven, that you might have the promise of everlasting life and salvation. That's our hope. That's our comfort, no matter what the world says. Who cares what the world says? That's the truth. That's what we cling to. If the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. That is our prayer for the church of all times and places. It's the prayer for us. That God would continue to speak his word to us. That God would continue to to point out our lies, to identify the lies so that we can avoid them. So that we can cling once again to the truth of his word, of who he is and all that he has done for us. That we might be set free from sin and death and devil and hell and be free indeed in his kingdom forever. May God grant this to us all. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us pray. We come to you, Holy Father, with praise and thanksgiving, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him, we beg you to accept and bless the prayers, the gifts, the offerings we bring you in thanksgiving, in token of the offering of our entire lives to your will. O Lord, remember your holy church. Watch over her and guide her. Grant her peace and unity throughout the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Remember, Lord, our pastors, our teachers, all servants of the church. Grant them to hold and teach the faith that comes to us from the blessed prophets and apostles. Let us pray to the Lord. Remember, Lord, our president, our public servants, and all in our armed forces. Guide, bless, protect, and uphold them in honor. Bring all nations into the ways of peace and justice. In your kindness and love, grant us seasonable weather, an abundance of all the fruits of the earth, and peace in our times. Let us pray to the Lord. Remember, Lord, all who suffer for your name, all who are in prison, the hungry and homeless, the poor and lonely, mothers with children, those who travel, and all those who cry out to you in time of need. Take them all under your tender care. Grant them your peace and a blessed deliverance from every affliction. Let us pray to the Lord. Remember, Lord, all who are gathered here before you, our living and true God. We pray for our well-being in this world and redemption in the life of the world to come. Order our days in your peace. Deliver us from the danger of eternal death. Count us among your chosen flock, not according to our merits, but according to your great mercy and pardon for our offenses. Let us pray to the Lord. Holy Father, in communion with your whole church, we remember before you and give you thanks for your saints who have gone before us, 
in whom you have given us a mirror of your mercy and grace. Give us grace to walk before you with faith like theirs, and grant us to share in their heavenly fellowship. Let us pray to the Lord. O Lord God, in your unfailing mercy and love, you graciously give us the holy and venerable supper of your Son. As we now prepare to receive his gifts, stir up our minds to the salutary remembrance of his benefits, to true and perpetual thanksgiving. Help us, your ministers and your people, that by this mystery of the new and eternal testament, we may remember how your Son once offered himself upon the cross for us, a ransom, pure, holy, and undefined. We beg you to bless and sanctify by your Holy Spirit's power this bread and wine, that they may become for us through our Lord's own omnipotent word, his true body and blood, the food and drink of eternal life. Fill all who partake of your mysteries today with every heavenly blessing and grace. For the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord, through whom you ever create, sanctify, bless, and bestow upon us all good things. Through him, with him, and in him, all honor and glory is yours, O God the Father Almighty, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection, open to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying,
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sin. This do as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
True body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you steadfast in the one true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace.
give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.
Good evening. Uh, welcome once again to all of you uh, who are here with us this evening. Also, welcome to those of us, or to those of you who have joined us uh, online. Uh, once again, um, we give thanks to God for allowing us to gather together as His people. Uh, we give thanks to God that He has continued uh, to proclaim to us His Word and His truth. Uh, we pray His continued blessing upon us uh, to keep us safe. Uh, and healthy in body and soul, and especially um, we, we remember also um, uh, at the time of Reformation that God would defend us from all of the enemies uh, of his church uh, here in the world. Um, please do look at the, uh, the bulletin and the announcements that are in there. Um, not a lot of new uh, things uh, going on. Um, one minor change for this week, there will be no Wednesday morning Bible class um, this week. I have to be out of the office uh, this week, Wednesday and Thursday, so, uh, so no Wednesday morning Bible class. Um, next week, I should have double-checked this. I believe that next week is the end of Daylight Savings Time uh, and the, uh, the Return to God's Time. Um, I hope that's correct. Um, it might be... I'm not kidding about that. If you want a long explanation of why that is, I'll tell you. But the, uh, I think it's next week. Please do check on that. It is? Okay. Um, so please be sure to, uh, to reset your clocks and, uh, and be here on time next Sunday. Um, next Sunday, uh, November 1st, is uh, All Saints Day. It is also uh, when we uh, remember the faithful departed. Uh, those uh, from our congregation who have passed uh, in the previous year, and we give thanks to God uh, for them. So I know that's kind of a, uh, one of those important uh, remembrances every year that we look forward to. So that is, uh, that is coming up next uh, Sunday, um, November 1st. Um, we've also hit that point in the calendar where there are uh, now uh, uh, two weeks uh, uh, two Saturdays off. Our next uh, Saturday service is three weeks from today on November 14th, so please do make a note of that uh, as well. Have a good week. Um.